Hi there, this is Lee McQueen, and I'm talking about public affairs today. And I just wanted to say one of my new favorite websites is Ballot Access News. It's at ballot-access.org. And there's just so much fascinating information about state politics, um, the electoral process. Um, Bernie Sanders did so much to highlight the importance of down ballot interests, and because it's the states that control the electoral process in each state. Until that gets streamlined, every state is different, and ballot access news just just chock full of constant changes and referendums and initiatives and court orders and lawsuits and all kinds of stuff going on state by state. And so I've been finding out a lot of stuff. I came here originally to see what information I could find about the Green Party, and then I just got caught up. <laughs> so I came across one little news snippet, and it's called California Bill Advances Would Let Felons Vote If They Are in County Jails Instead of State or Federal Prisons. And so this is really interesting. There seems to be a renewal of interest in restoring voting rights to people who are still under supervision by law enforcement or are still within the law enforcement system. And California is uh, one of the states that's working on that. Um, Virginia, under the governorship of Terry McAuliffe, is another. Um, but anyway, I'm talking about California with this and uh, this. A uh, new um, bill would be would allow felons to vote while they're incarcerated if they are serving time in county jails instead of state or federal prison. And the bill passed the California Assembly on May 31st, and it passed the Senate Elections Committee on June 22nd. And the California legislature is in recess, but they'll uh, convene in a few weeks. Um, and the only other state that currently let felons vote while they are incarcerated are Maine and Vermont. Uh, most countries around the world actually allow felons to vote while they are serving a sentence. Um, in the United States, it's state by state. Um, every state has their own rules. And so Vermont and Maine allow felons who are incarcerated to vote. California is considering allowing felons who are incarcerated in county jail to vote. So, very interesting times. Um, but there's um, that's not all that's going on. I'm uh, looking ahead at some other stories. And um, earlier this primary season, and this entire primary race, especially on the Democratic side, really put to the forefront a lot of concerns about certain restrictions in certain states. In Wisconsin, which is uh, basically an open primary system, uh, which went, you know, Wisconsin went for Bernie Sanders, but there was a problem in Wisconsin. The voter ID laws, um, that was um, pretty harsh and pretty difficult to overcome. And that's being addressed now um, in the same way that Minnesota is moving from a caucus to a primary, an open primary system. Lots of states are readjusting their voting systems, their electoral process, as a direct result of all that occurred this primary season. And so Wisconsin is just another such state that's responding to what occurred this primary season. The U.S. District Court rules that Wisconsin must allow voters with ID to vote if they signed under penalty of perjury that they couldn't have obtained such ID. And so, um, let's see, this was the order in Frank versus Walker, and this case was filed in 2011 over Wisconsin's law requiring voters at the polls to show voter ID, and so, uh, or photo ID. And the order says the state must let voters vote if they sign a declaration at the polls that say, under penalty of perjury, that they have been unable to obtain photo ID. And so that's a way to get around um, some of the obstacles that were put in place. Um, the people of uh, Wisconsin have 
responded to that by saying they want voting to be easier and not harder. There's more information about that at Ballot Access News, and I'll have a, a link to the story in the description. But um, I'm going to move on because I think I still have one more story. And this is about Charlotte Pitt, the West Virginia Democratic Party nominee for governor in 1996. She accepts the Green Party nomination. And so on July 16th, in the West Virginia Green Party, which is named the Mountain Party, uh, they nominated Charlotte, Charlotte Pitt for governor, and she accepted and so she ran uh, for governor as a Democratic nominee as West, as West, in West Virginia. And she lost that um, general election with 45.6% uh, of the vote cast. And so she was defeated by a Republican, uh, but she is um, going on to uh, represent the Green Party as their nominee for governor. That's exciting. And I'm actually going to do another video specifically on Charlotte Pritt because um, I think it's great. Um, I think a green governor would be lovely. <laughs> so anyway, check out Ballot Access News. There's likely something about your state, um, either somewhere in the archives or there will be a story based on what's going on in your state. But it's a way to keep track of what's um, going on and who's doing what and whether voting is getting easier or harder, uh, things, things to be interested in, I think. 